Is your life coming short of what you desire it to be? Have you been told by someone that there is no hope for you because you knew better than to do what you did in sinning after professing to be a Christian? I am sure you have heard some say, there is no such thing as a born-again believer backsliding. Also, some have looked at a person who had some weakness in the way of a habit and judged that the person could not possibly have the Holy Ghost in them, for they will say, God will not dwell in an unclean vessel. Such statements as these have caused much confusion in the ranks of Christianity, but let us see if we cannot settle these arguments by letting the Word of God speak to us. Please keep an open mind as you read this message. If your mind is made up already, there is nothing in this message that will help you. It is being published for the benefit of those who want to know the truth, and those who find the truth will be made free. John chapter 8 verse 32. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26. A question that came to me recently has caused me to search the scriptures concerning the verse that read, If we sin willfully. You will find in the letter to the Hebrews the scripture for our thought today. The part that we are going to deal with is found in chapter 10, verse 26, but we will read verses 26 to 29 to get a picture in our minds of what the writer is dealing with here. First, let me say this, even though it is commonly accepted that this epistle was probably written by the Apostle Paul, there is no concrete evidence to dogmatically attribute the authorship to him. One thing we are sure of though, much of the language found in this epistle sounds very much like Paul, especially chapter 13 23, where there is a personal reference made concerning Timothy. The occasion for writing the epistle to the Hebrews seems to be a need to exhort those who had professed faith in Jesus as the Messiah to hold fast, stop wavering, and go on to maturity. It seems that many of them might have been on the borderline of turning back to Judaism, for we see in the earlier verses of chapter 10 that he has been reminding the people of the superiority of the one sacrifice of the new covenant, which was the Lord Jesus Christ himself, in contrast to the continual sacrifices of the old covenant. He has exhorted the people not to forsake the assembling of themselves together. He had admonished them to consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. Then, he comes to verse 26, let us read. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, 27, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. 28, he that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses, 29, of how much sore a punishment, suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy, who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant, with which he was sanctified, an unholy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. Keep this scripture in mind, and let's turn to the sixth chapter and start reading with the fourth verse. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, and have tasted of the heavenly gift, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. 5. And have tasted the good word of God, and the powers of the world to fall away. 6. If they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. When we put these two scripture passages together, it presents a fearful picture in our minds unless we go on to find the occasion for such words, and find out what they are actually having reference to. Now we preach that God is a loving and merciful God, and we look at these scriptures in the light of what is written in all of the other scriptures that deal with sin, and our conclusion is that there has got to be an answer in the word of God that will satisfy a hungry soul who desires to know the truth. In 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 we read, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please notice, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It sure looks like there is a possibility that the people of God could commit sins, doesn't it? With that scripture in mind, let's look at another one in 1 John chapter 3 verse 9, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. Both of these verses were written by the same man, the Apostle John. They seem to present a contradiction, for they are dealing with two different things. With these two verses to think upon, let us go back to Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26, for if we sin willfully after having received the knowledge of the truth winking face, we will have to find out what the word sin is pointing to. That word sin in 1026 has to be the same thing as, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, etc. Chapter 6 to 4. These two verses will have to go together, they were both written by the same man. He was writing to warn and exhort these Hebrews. Therefore, there could be no contradiction. We will hang this upon the word, sin, and endeavor to find out what he was talking about. If we sin willfully, is he talking about smoking, drinking, gambling, or what? It was none of these things, they are only the attributes of the sin that was being spoken of here. Yet, how many times, through this age of grace, has the word sin been associated with smoking, and all of the many other things that unregenerate mankind is a slave to? Evangelists use these scriptures to scare people into repenting, but did you know that you cannot scare a sinner into repenting with the attitude and motive that God will accept? 
Jesus plainly said that no man could come to him except he be drawn by the Father. In other words, no man can come to the Word, except he be drawn by the Spirit. Jesus was the Word made flesh, according to John chapter 1 verse 14. You might say, then what did Jesus mean when he said to go out and compel them to come in? He sure didn't mean that we should force or drag them in. It was not like that in the book of Acts, and that was the pattern. You will find, as you read the book of Acts, that wherever the gospel was preached, as many as were ordained to eternal life, believed. Men were heard crying out, what must we do? The answer would come back, repent, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, Acts chapter 2 verse 38, 16 31, 33, etc. Keep this word sins in your mind as you study this message, for it is in the framework of sins, that we find all of the bad habits that mankind is addicted to, and we are dealing with the word sin in its singular form in this message.